Hey, welcome to another Science Masterclass from Mr. Saligaris. Today we're going to learn about electromagnetic radiation. All right, let's get started. Maybe not with that one. Um, all right, so we've already learned some of these things here about wave motion and about um, the different properties of wave, but let's um, just refresh our memory in some of these things. So the transfer of energy without matter is called wave motion. Uh, there are two types of waves that can transfer energy that's transverse and uh, transverse waves and longitudinal waves this is what they look like transverse waves have particles which move up and down like a beach wave and longitudinal waves have particles which vibrate back and forth like a sound wave on the right hand side of this slide here we've got um, some examples or some illustrations of these here okay um, some of these properties that you already know about is the frequency, the wavelength, and the amplitude represent frequency using the um, letter F, wavelength using the symbol uh, for lambda. Um, so frequency refers to the number of waves produced each second. It's measured in the units of hertz. Wavelength is the distance between two successive waves. This is represented by the symbol lambda um, and is measured using uh, the units of meters. Amplitude um, is the maximum distance uh, a wave extends beyond its middle position. So on the right here we've got um, for transverse and for longitudinal waves how to find those wavelengths or amplitude or um, I don't think it shows the frequency uh, but it gives you an idea of what that looks like for those two types of waves. Okay. Um, when an electric charge, uh, sorry, when an electric charge, such as when electric current flows into a wire, a magnetic field is generated. Similarly, a changing magnetic field generates an electric field. Um, this interaction between the electric and magnetic fields can be represented as a transverse wave. This is called an electromagnetic wave. So this is an illustration of what an electromagnetic wave looks like, where you've got alternating electric and magnetic fields. Okay, electromagnetic radiation is energy that travels through space as electromagnetic waves. Some examples of these things include visible light, microwaves, and x-rays. Uh, in this um, clip, we're going to look at some of these types of electromagnetic radiation, what they're used for, uh, and what they actually are. Okay, so the entire range of frequencies of electromagnetic radiation that can be produced is called the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, an illustration of this is on the diagram here below. This ranges from low energy radiation, such as radio waves, through to high energy radiation, such as gamma rays. Um, so gamma rays are located here on the left hand side of this um, figure, and then radio waves um, on the right hand side. Okay, you can see the visible light here is, is about in the center. Okay, as energy of the radiation increases, the frequency of electromagnetic waves also increase and the wavelength decreases. Electro electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light, um, that's 300,000 kilometers per second, so probably faster than a car. Um, so you can see what I was talking about just then in this illustration here with the, um, the waves in the center that you can see. Um, you can see that the wavelength increases um, with a radio wave and then it decreases when you get to those higher energy waves uh, called gamma rays on the other end of the spectrum there. All right, Electromagnetic waves can travel through empty space, gases, liquids and some solids. Radio waves have the longest wavelength of all types of electromagnetic radiation. This can range from a few kilometers, uh, sorry from a few meters to uh, la, 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 let me start that again. This can range from a few meters, um, so that doesn't, that doesn't even make sense. This can range uh, between a few meters to a couple of kilometers in length. Um, these are the lowest energy form of electromagnetic radiation. Radio waves can travel large distances. Um, so on the right here we've got a radio tower which emits these um, or transmits these radio waves. So each radio station broadcasts signals at particular frequencies. This is why each station has a different channel. Um, so you can see here the difference between an AM wave and an FM wave. Um, the AM wave at the top um, is irregular, and then the FM wave down the bottom is slightly different. Um, it, it looks a little bit more regular. Um, right. So radio stations transmit their signals by amplifying the signal through an amplifier then broadcasting it via a radio tower. The signal is received by an antenna and interpreted by the receiving device, such as a car radio. This illustration here down the bottom shows this. On the left, you've got um, sound waves going into a microphone. That microphone then 
um, converts it into electric signal which goes into an amplifier that amplifier amplifies the signal um, to a radio tower which then transmits that radio signal to a receiver um, in the form of something like a radio um, and then that re uh, receiver transforms that electrical signal back into sound through a speaker. Sounds a little complex but it's actually not that bad. Microwaves have a shorter wavelength than radio waves and they're used in radar and communication systems. Shorter wavelength microwaves uh, that are used in cooking are absorbed by water, fats and sugars in food causing the molecules to vibrate and heat up. So that whole idea of particle theory. Um, I think uh, some defense forces are using radio waves as uh, weapons. I think uh, on the right here we've got a, um, a vehicle which has a uh, microwave uh, transmitter or receiver uh, as part of their radar system. Okay, because heating, uh, sorry, because heating occurs inside food without warming uh, the surrounding area, this is in a microwave, um, the food cooks quickly, however, sometimes unevenly. You've probably experienced that before where you've got around the outside, it's quite hot, and then the inside, it's quite cold. Um, glass, paper, and many plastics don't absorb microwaves, um, and metal reflects it. Okay, infrared radiation. Heat is transferred from the sun to us as infrared radiation. You cannot see this radiation, but can detect its presence as warmth in your skin. All objects above zero degrees Kelvin emit infrared radiation. The hotter something is, the more infrared radiation it emits. Um, on the right, you've got an infrared camera which shows um, how much infrared uh, radiation has been emitted by a particular, um, particular object or, or thing. So ultraviolet uh, light is another form of electric... Uh, another form of radiation on the electromagnetic spectrum as we work our way um, up or down is radiation with a higher frequency than violet light. Sunlight contains UV light, so ultraviolet light, which your body needs to produce vitamin D. Too much UV light can tan or burn your skin. High exposure can cause sin, uh, sin cancer, skin cancer. That would be crazy. Um, some substances fluoresce, which means they emit or um, shine off light uh, when hit by UV light such as paper, teeth, whiteners and some laundry powders. So when you've got a black light, um, I'm not sure why it's called a black light, it's actually purple, um, when you have things like white clothes and that and shine it on it, it, it iridesces or becomes fluorescent. X-rays, now we're moving on to a different type of electromagnetic radiation, are used to investigate the structure of objects. They produce high energy radiation that can damage cells, tissues and genetic material inside cells. X-rays are used in radiology to produce images of bones, like the one seen on the right here. And this one, a little creepy, the arrow through the head. Moving on. Wait. And the spoon in the stomach? What? Uh, Alright, that guy's got a nail on the head. Alright, X-rays can be used for medical purposes, such as radiology, but also in radiotherapy, where they're used to kill or stop cancer cells. They are also used to examine... Uh, use the airports to examine baggage. Uh, that one there's got a gun in that, so it's a good thing they've got x-rays there. Because of the high energy of x-rays, it's important that people who work with them use protective uh, lead shields and monitor their exposure levels. All right. Gamma rays, um, that's the next one and the last one on the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation have incredibly short wavelengths about 100 billionth of a meter that's that's smaller than a centimeter um, only have it sorry they only have uh, only a thick sheet of lead or concrete wool will stop them gamma rays are produced in making nuclear power or nuclear bombs they're detected using a Geiger counter the end all right hey uh, we talked about the different electromagnetic radiation today, um, the different forms of it, their wavelengths, their properties, all that sort of thing. Uh, we talked about um, how there's different rays on the electromagnetic spectrum. Make sure you go back and watch it again if there's something you missed because it's really important to understand those things on the electromagnetic spectrum. Make sure you like my channel. Make sure you subscribe to it. Um, and like I keep saying, watch it again. Hey, thanks for watching. Do 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 do